Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an arming switch for your quadcopter. Now I'm going to be using the Wizard X220 as an example here. This has an SP Racing F3 flight controller and I'm going to be using the FSI6X transmitter. But this should apply to just about any other quadcopter that I can think of because the basic concepts of what we're doing is what's most important. Also, another big thing, if you have a Wizard X220, go check out this video. I'll put a link up in here or in the description. It's a full setup guide. I know it's a couple of years old, but at like 80 to 90% of everything is still relevant for the Wizard X220. So if you are brand new and, and you're not even sure what step you're supposed to be at, go watch that whole setup guide and I go through everything including setting up an arming switch. Just in case you're wondering what an arming switch is, it's basically like an on-off safety switch for your quadcopter. And this is to keep you from accidentally bumping the throttle and then your quadcopter just goes bananas and just starts shredding everything. And you don't want that to happen most of the time. So you have a safety switch and we call it an arming switch. And you really have to have one of these. like. Technically, it's optional, but really, like, no, you, you want one of these. And pretty much every modern quadcopter is going to be armed with a switch. Some of them, like the older style, uh, or maybe certain uh, photography style drones, would, would do like, uh, like a stick commands, which you call stick commands, so moving the sticks to a certain position. It's not very great, and it's definitely not what you want on any kind of a racing type of quadcopter where you are the pilot and you're in control. You wanna have an arming switch, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to set up right now. Okay, first things first, take off your propellers. Take off those spinny blades. We're gonna need a battery because we're gonna need a power on the quadcopter. And you also need to make sure that your quadcopter is bound, the receiver connected to your quadcopter, that it's bound with your transmitter. If you don't know how to do that, uh, I have a video. I'll put a link right up here. There's two main parts to setting up an arming switch. One is going to be in the transmitter, and then the other is going to be in beta flight, which we're going to hop into in a minute. If you don't know what beta flight is, go check out that full setup guide video, and also I have a video explaining what beta flight is. First, let's jump into the transmitter and get things set up how we need to. All right, let's get into the main menu here. We're gonna press and hold OK to get into the main menu. Press OK again to go into the system menu. And then we're gonna scroll down until we get to aux switches. Click on that. You wanna make sure that they're all turned on and the channel says 10 channel. And this should all be mostly similar for any, uh, for a, an i6X or an i6S or even an i6 but you won't have 10 channels on an i6 unless you do the channel up, uh, firmware upgrade for the i6. Okay, so make sure all of those are switched to on and then switch to 10 channel and you can use the uh, up and down keys to switch it on. Very important, press and hold cancel in order to save it when we're getting out of there and then we can go back. I like to actually go back in to the, the, the menu and make sure that everything stayed and then we can get out of here. We can go back to the setup menu or the function setup menu. And then we can scroll down to aux channels. And then here is where it will show you what your channel is and what your source is. So basically which switch. So in, um, in this case, channel five is set to variable A, which is actually incorrect. Um, what I want it to set to, and for this example, I'm gonna set it to switch a, because that's where I like my uh, arm switch to be. So, <clears throat> okay, now I have to point out that the switches on here are labeled with letters. So switch A, B, C, and D, and then you have this uh, variable knob A, and then variable knob B. So in here, in this menu, when it says switch A, they're talking about this one. Switch B is going to be uh, this switch and so on. So what you need to do is press OK to go, like go to the next little selection here and then press the up or down keys to select which switch you want connected to which channel. And the channels are going to come into play in Betaflight and I'll talk about that when it's time. And that's all I want for now, but you can set them all up how you like them. I'm gonna press and hold cancel to get out of there and save it 
and then I'm going to go back in just to make sure it stayed. So switch A is channel 5, and that's what we want. So now I will just go back to the main menu, and we're all done in here. Okay, now we have our laptop. We have a USB data cable. This can carry data, not just for charging. That's very, very important. Now we're going to connect it to the quadcopter, and then we're going to jump into Betaflight. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go on the left-hand side, we want to go to the Modes tab. Well, first, okay, let's go to the Receiver tab first, because first we want to make sure that our transmitter will actually talk to our quadcopter and the switches will work and stuff. So we're going to turn on our transmitter, okay? Just like that. We are going to get our battery here and without the props on our propeller, on our quadcopter, we're going to uh, plug in the battery here to power it on. And watch out for your uh, video transmitter, your VTX. It might get really hot, so be careful, don't touch it and probably don't leave it on for too long. Cool, so now we're in here, we can see that our sticks are moving the little bars in the receiver tab. So that's that's what I wanted to check and make sure that our transmitter works. And then also you can see which switches activate uh, which aux channels. And this is gonna be really helpful. So in this case, switch A, which was uh, channel five on my transmitter here, this switch right here, you can see that when I activate it, it's changing channel one. Okay, channel one right there. So channel one is what we want to use for the arming switch, aux one, sorry, aux one. So aux one right there is what we want to use for the arming switch. Side note, you'll see here the quadcopter is like slowly spinning. Um, I'm not sure if that's due to trims in my transmitter, but if your quadcopter is drifting and you don't know why, go check out this video about uh, quadcopter drift and how to fix it. So now let's go over to the modes tab and you can see right here we have no modes at all. And we need at least an arming mode and probably probably some other modes like uh, angle mode and air mode and that sort of thing. But we're gonna focus on arming right now. So what we wanna do is we want to click add range, okay? And then you see we have this yellow bar and we can adjust the length of this yellow bar. And then we have this little yellow tick mark right there at 1500, that's the middle position. And then you see here it says auto, this little drop down menu. What we want to select is channel one because channel one, aux channel one, I should say, aux one, equates to channel five in our transmitter. And you say, what? Why is that? Well, I have a whole video talking about aux channels and why, you know, how they work and what they are. But basically, uh, aux one is going to be the first channel in addition to your four channels for your stick commands. So that's why it's called aux one, even though on the transmitter it's channel five. So you wanna set that to aux one. And let's see, so we'll see, we can see that when we flip the switch here, you see this little, this little yellow tick mark goes from 1000 in the up position to 2000 in the bottom position. And so what we want to do is drag this yellow bar, press, click and hold to, dra to drag the yellow bar, over top of the tick mark when it's in the on position. So in this case, for me, I like to flip the switch up to get it to arm. So let's drag the the bar over top, it doesn't have to be precise at all, um, over top of the 1000 at the tick mark. So now if we click save, you'll see it says arming disabled. So Betaflight has disabled the arming um, although I've had it be kind of intermittent sometimes, but it's disabled the arming, so you can't arm while you're in beta flight unless you like press a little uh, press a little button, and that's a, that's a safety feature. Um, and so this, so that's what how it should show up. And so you've already saved it. So now when we flip the switch back, you see the the red the red thing goes away, and then now it's now it's back. So everything really should be working just fine. If you do have your uh, so we've already saved it. If you do have your propellers off, as you should, we can go over here to the motors tab and then you can click the I understand that if I chop my face off, it's my problem button. Okay, and then now we can actually arm the quadcopter. Just like that. So now we know our switch 
is working to arm the quadcopter. And if you still have questions about how all this stuff works, be sure to check out this video right over here, the full setup guide video all about this. Um, I think it's really going to help you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, let me know. Leave me a comment below. And if you still have questions, leave me comments. I would love to be able to help you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.